Los, gib mal Gummi hier. Okay. Nicht so viel getestet. Müssen wirklich ein bisschen hier gucken, dass der Alt hält. The last weeks Mark and I worked hard on a JM1 to make it ready for release. And Mark did a wonderful paint work and I was testing the new gear and did the first flights with the scaled version of the JM1. So let's go! After printing the JM1 with the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon in PLA Aero, the whole jet was white and I think this could look much more awesome. And Mark is a professional airbrush artist, so let's see what he is doing. The actual outer design was inspired by the great white shark. This means a white lower body and a gray upper. And the section in between will be very interesting. To figure out a good technique for painting these lightweight PLA foaming parts, the idea was starting with small parts, especially on the canopy. It's important that the printing structure is not visible. This was realized by using different layers of filler and a final glossy spray paint. Next was priming the fuselage with some filler and filling bigger gaps with putty. In this instance I'm trying to create uh, more defined panel lines on the JRM01 and I'm using Mecca light grey wash little bottle um, used by plastic modelers to uh, weather and give their models a bit more of a texture. So literally just run the bottle panel lines. It's a water-based uh, solution, so it can be easily wiped off. I try and wipe the solution in the direction of travel. So it looks like some of these smears are going down past the panel lines. So that's just using my finger to do that. And you can use a sponge and a tissue. And then what happens is the wash settles in the base of the panel lines and then it becomes very dark and uh, more accentuated so it really brings the panel lines and the surface detail out on the jet. It's the technique that I like to use to um, make the whole jet look a little bit used and weathered and uh, it's relatively easy to do. Get some really good results. Here I've probably gone a bit overboard but uh, I'll just grab some paper towel and we'll wipe that off. You can see the beauty of this liquid is that it's water soluble piece of paper towel and you can sort of see definition of those panel lines coming out using this technique. And for more surface details Mark was creating some nice spray paint templates and for sure they will be printable. They fit perfect and it was a great fun to paint all these details. Mark is using some battery powered airbrush tool which make working super comfortable without any air hoses or cables. And here Mark is preparing the masking tape for the transition from white to grey. And finally the first spray painted JRM1 is ready.
Here for ease of use, I'm using the Protec rechargeable airbrush. Um, very convenient, doesn't need a compressor uh, or a hose. Um, very simple USB charging front of the device. Comes with two paint holders, one aluminium and one plastic. I tend to use the solvent based paints with the aluminium. Um, here we have a, I think it's about a 0.2 to 0.3 nozzle front of the airbrush um, simple power action always blowing however paint release happens through the the trigger system and you can control it look in terms of uh, quality of an airbrush and the quality of the finish it's good for general purpose um, coverage of areas painted areas and in this instance just a quick setup to be able to quickly airbrush certain details on the plane here I'm using SMS um, Premium Model Makers paint. It's a white acrylic lacquer. Give that bottle a good shake and empty the contents, not the contents, but a little bit into the airbrush, the Protec airbrush. So all I'm trying to do is just get enough coverage for JRM logo on the tail. And as we can see here, using the Crycut Cricut um, vinyl cutter. And uh, we will now try and attempt to paint you can see very simple, very fine movements over the stencil. Not too much flow, just enough to paint those letters white. And now we switch half around the globe from Australia to Germany to the first test flights of the all new JRM1 with landing gear. Los geht mal, komm hier! At first some slower and then faster start runs has been simulated to see if the new 3D printed landing gear is widget enough for this rough grass surface. On the first start, the gyro gain was a bit too much set it, so the jet start uh, swinging and wobbling a bit, but it was reduced by the TX and it was just flight in the lowest gain level and after landing the gain was readjusted but also the jet flies absolutely wonderful from the first moment. Ja, das sieht gut aus. Weil gleich so ein bisschen im High Alpha war. Trotzdem schwer zu sehen. Here's the first roll and it rotates awesome fast. Es ist ein wunderschönes Flugzeug. Ich bin so happy damit. <lacht> Ey, das ist so handsam. Es ist geil. Stellen wir den, den Gyro noch ein bisschen ein, damit den Flaps arbeiten können. Eine geile Kiste. Kommt einer. Hab mal Hause hier. And here we will see the second start with Martin on the sticks doing the first acrobatics. Ja, 
Nee, immer leicht runter. Also nicht schwingt, also so, verstehe, verstehe. Na dann, hast du noch eine Stufe? Super gutmütig, wa? Hm? Vier Minuten für mich jetzt schon, also fliegst du auch schon in der Ecke. Hm? Na, eine Dreibeinlandung, Martin. Ich staune. Even when we were super happy with all the flight characteristics, there were some issues with the landing gear caused by two small ball heads which flipped off, so the gear retracted. And we had to do some redesign, which you can do, see here. And after this, the JRM will be tested again and then hopefully released soon. Mark and I were working a lot on all the documentations and also building up our new webshop. And I think in March the JRM1 will be released for all of you as printable jet. So see you soon. And if you like to support this channel, you will also find a lot of behind the scenes photos and infos about this project on my Patreon site. The link is below in the video description. And we will see us in the next video. Bye bye.